everybody and welcome 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 to another uh elephant exposed uh episode i am your host cj jones and um today um we're just gonna try to have a um meeting of the minds if you will um here lately uh when i've been um strolling through uh different websites and um, trying to educate myself on uh, what is uh, toxic male uh, energy. Um, it seemed like that, it seems like um, every season or so we'll end up catching a, um, a, a, a favorite phrase. Um, that just floats around in media and is is used is picked up is is said a whole lot and uh a lot of these times and especially when it comes out of the mouths of um big platform uh media <clears throat> or a very notable um celebrity or whatnot and all of a sudden it becomes uh law or gospel or whatnot and it doesn't have um true context um most people out here i mean let's just be real um are sheepish sheepish and if you don't understand what i mean i'm more than happy to uh to explain it to you sheepish in the sense that i'm using it means that you're just following the crowd, whatever or whoever is your shepherd, whoever you are looking up to, whoever you are getting your ideals and thoughts and stuff coming from, whatever they say, then that's what goes. And you just going along with the flow. Um, and when you are a sheep, um, you don't have any independent thought. And in, in, in cases like whenever, you, you know, we hear this phrase, um, toxic male energy. When, when, when I hear that, um, first, it, it sounded kind of strange to me because, I mean, never really heard any um body use those particular uh that particular phrase and when it was said it was said in the description of men just being men and what i mean by that is that i am one that i do i definitely believe in gender roles um everything has its place um in life and me as far as i'm concerned that yeah there's definitely a male role a male do what males do and a female do what males i mean what females do so and that's the short version of it um if you haven't uh if you haven't clicked off me by now uh i will expand so here we go the so I begin to dig and um, it doesn't take a whole lot of digging actually um, because it's such a popular phrase and different websites pop up, a lot of uh, mental health health websites pop up. And of course uh, you got all the kinds of uh, third party uh, pages that pop up and give their view on what is now known as toxic male energy. And at first, by me being a heterosexual male, I was like, okay, well, let me take a step back and try not to be so defensive because things only have power over you if you give it the energy to, uh, to allow it to have power over you. So I was like, okay, well, before I go on the defense or go on the attack or whatever, 
let me see what people are really saying. Um, because like I said, the examples that I saw, the words wasn't quite matching at face value what certain females or a certain kind of female out there was saying what male uh, what what male energy was they was calling it toxic male energy and so at on the surface I was like okay well are they just attacking men period because as a man I'm not going to think act or connect like any female will my energy is different my I have testosterone flowing through my veins. Um, my, my physical makeup is different. My approach to life is different. Um, I grew up in a traditional heterosexual home, um, Christian home. So all these things play, play a part in my upbringing. And so um, I have uh, wrote down, because I did not um, have a uh, slideshow to, to share with you guys, but I wrote down a couple um, pieces of information that I got off one of the websites that I thought it was very in interesting. You can actually Google it yourself uh, when you get some time. And um, this particular list comes off the Hero Rise uh, website. So what? So I was looking for because here, here's the thing about the internet. If you want to look up something to fit your own personal bias uh, approach or agenda, you'll find it because more than you have uh, that bias or that prejudice against whatever irks you the most okay but if you are truly seeking um a non-bias and a non-prejudicial way of approaching something then you would you would take the more open-minded approach the more educated approach the more mature way of of seeking information rather than just I'm just going to go by this because this is in line with what I think. And there's nothing else. Um, nothing, 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 nothing in this world is black and white, not purely black and white. Um, we live in a lot more of a gray world than what we realize and to what we want to come to terms with. But that's an individual walk. So I'm going to leave that up to you um, to uh, make adjustments there. So anyway, um, like I said, um, if you want, like I said, if you want it to be biased uh, by this, of course, you can Google stuff that's going to fight and defend. And if you wanted to take the softer approach, you can, oh, you know, you got some flowery stuff out there. But this right here, I think, was the more fair way of looking at both because it actually showed the comparisons of both. Honestly, I was I was very surprised when I when I read through it. So I'm going to read these notes off to you. Um, and then, like I said, I will I do encourage you. This is not my information. This is something I got off the website. It's called Hero Rise. Um, and they are it's a it's a little chart. Um, you have to read. <laughs> you have to scroll down the page a little bit. And they'll have this uh, comparison chart. And within this comparison ch chart, um, and they have side by side, uh, it has toxic male, in, uh, me toxic, uh, male energy versus positive masculine traits. Now, that right off the bat should tell you, okay, everything is a, ha has a balance. Everything has a balance. And... Um, so here we go. We're going to go down the toxic side first. All right. So this is what uh, people are claiming. You know, this is what we hear on, on in social media and everything. Whenever 
uh, they want to cast a bad a a uh, someone in bad lighting. They'll say, "Oh, this guy is toxic," you know. So he showed. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, bullets. Never shows weakness. Bullet number two. Aggression, and they just leave it just like that. I don't really agree with that one because there is a time and a place for everything, everything, everything. But I'll I'll go back to that. Um, bullet number three. Not display emotion. Okay. The next one. Discrimination against people who aren't. Um, heterosexual that sounds like that was mostly inspired by members of the pronouns but again i'll go back and i'll address that too overly self-sufficiency okay Emotional insensitivity. Now, here is the opposite. This is the positive masculine traits of a man. Secure in one's self, in one's self. Two, healthy communication. Three, emotionally vulnerable. Four, inclusive and open minded. Next one, caring. They just leave it like that. Centrally grounded. Okay, all right. In other words, well, I'll go back to it. And the last one, honest. Now, let's start out with that one. Honest. Honest is not male nor female. That's human. If that's the case, the, you should have a list up here that says toxic female energy. Why are we just categorizing something to be toxic for males? Is there a chart out here for toxic female? Even in the Bible, um, it speaks on everything positive about uh, about the virtues of a woman. You know, you have your Proverbs. I want to say it's Proverbs 31, a uh, woman, uh, where it talks about the virtues of a woman. And in the Bible, it also talks about clear defining roles of the man of the wife and that of the children and so forth. Um, but I haven't seen anywhere. Um, and let me know if you do, if there is a list of a toxic female uh, list out there, because let's be fair, guys. If you're going to say you got toxic men, then we know that everything has an opposite. So we should automatically know that there are toxic females out there. And there should be a list out there to um, address those as well. So as I'm going down the toxic male list, I'm, I have a little bit of pushback with a couple of them. And this is this is um i'm going to approach it like this the 
never show weakness. I'm gonna say in in from my perspective, um, it depends on my situation. But it says never show weakness. So what's really given this particular trait a little weight of being toxic is the never part. So um, you are definitely, as a, as a male, as a traditional heterosexual male, um, there will be times where um, you can't, as the provider protector, um, you can't afford to show signs of weakness because you are supposed to be showing strength and being the strength, being the support. So, all right, let's move, let's move on, on. Aggression. For some reason, this word loves to be attacked. Aggression. Um, I learned from a canceling session that aggression in itself, it just sounds harsh. So uh, one of my particular uh, meetings, uh, they, um, this particular counsel, counselor suggested, uh, let's replace aggression with assertiveness. See, now that sounds more ex socially acceptable and it's, and it's not as brash as aggression, you know, so um, because I think most people don't really get to see the difference between the aggression and the assertiveness of, of, of a man. And it's, it's a blurry line sometimes. And especially if you are a high energy male like myself, um, my assertiveness may come across as being aggressive and that's because I'm an extrovert. Um, I, I do, I wear my uh, emotions on my sleeve sometimes um, and I can go, I have the ability to go. See, the one thing is to know oneself. I do have the ability to go from zero to a hundred very fast. So, um, but because I have learned myself and come to grips with the type of person I am. Um, I do, I know when I am being, uh, when I'm surpassing being assertive about something, then I'm going to aggression. So that's arguable at best. Um, the next one, let's see, do not display emotion. I'm a kind of pair, uh, do not display emotion. I'm going to pair that one up kind of like with the never show weakness one. Um, because again, that kind of goes hand in hand. What I'm thinking of, the first thing that comes to my mind is combat. Um, yeah, <laughs> if you are emotional, that means you're mentally distracted. Um, on the battlefield in, in the military, we call it being emotionally compromised. If you are emotionally compromised, you can't focus that on the task at hand. And if you are in a combative situation, you can cause people to die, period. So again, not necessarily toxic when it's balanced out or when it's put, to, um, in the right focus. This is why, like, sometimes if you ever look at uh, martial arts movies and different things like that, you know, uh, you would probably hear phrases like, you can allow your fear to become your, your friend in a sense, because when you have that healthy sense of fear means that you're just not going to go into something blindly and just argh, uh, attack it or whatever. Uh, you're trying to do and you end up messing up hurting yourself and, or causing other people to get hurt so forth and things like that so in other words um, 
as as men we, we're taught to embrace the fear and use it healthily you know so you just um what <laughs> again i can't help but think of my military experience um and um i know i probably got some um army soldiers out there and some uh marines out there that that knows that there's a difference between um a grunt and someone like working in the office those are two different mindsets um they have to be assessive they have to um they have to be aggressive i'm sorry they have to show no fear they have to show no weakness uh whenever they are on a mission to um accomplish something so when it's when it's put in context like that then those things make sense so i'm thinking that maybe whenever you see these words uh again these women that have a problem with this toxic male energy it's 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 too broad of a stroke and they're like ah that's too much that's toxic male energy put it in perspective put it in perspective that's all i'm saying um discrimination against people who aren't homosexuals i mean heterosexuals i'm sorry discrimination against people who aren't heterosexual that sounds more or less like a control and this is what i mean just because well okay i'll I put it like this i don't have to agree with you to get along with you it's just like being having to work with someone that you have to be professional with you may not necessarily like your boss or like your supervisor or even like your coworker, but there's a mission that when, let's just say like there's an assembly line or something in a warehouse or whatever the case may be. I don't have to like you in order to do my part to pass it down for you to do your part. And then at the end, there's, boom, there's the product. I just do my part. That's all I do. And so discrimination against people who aren't heterosexual, yeah, now to me, you're walking that, that line of, okay, now don't forget, you got to like someone that aligns with you in the sexual world. I can care less as to who you sleep with. And it ain't even my business. So if I'm, and again, this has nothing to do with male. That's male and female. So I pair that up. I, I pair that line up with honesty. That's not a toxic male thing per se. That That's a... That's just a person that truly do have a prejudice or a bias against um, against people who aren't heterosexual. I can't make you uh, like someone of uh, someone you don't agree with on the sexual platform. That's why I say it, to me, it sounds very controlling. So if I'm, if I happen to um, excuse myself around, let's just say, someone that's coming across to me uh, with uh, flamboyant energy, it's, it's a guy, but he has flamboyant energy. I'm not required to hang around or stay. Uh, that's what this sounds like. So if I'm looking at that, like out of context, please hit me up in the comments and let me know. Um, because to me, like I said, this is a personal opinion. It sound, that sounds more like of a control measure. Like you're going to accept me. You're going to like me. You're going to uh, deal with me. Yes, professionally, 
As long as you're doing your job, I can care less. And like I said, number two, who you sleep with is your business. It's not none of mine. So why would even something like this be an issue? It mostly comes from people that are flamboyant because the download brothers or the lesbian sisters and all else in between. And if I didn't call your pronoun out, don't feel bad, okay? Who you sleep with, who you choose to sleep with, how you choose to sleep with them, even if it's a human being, is none of my business. The people that have a problem with this uh, are the people that has that, hey, everybody look at me and it's all about me and my lifestyle and whatever the case may be. They're very flamboyant, okay? As a matter of fact, I I used to, um, and the reason why I said I used to is because I'm no longer in contact uh, with some of my friends that are homosexual, but um, I had a very good, healthy, educated conversation with my heterosexual friend, and one of the things that he shared with me during the time that uh, we would talk almost every day, and he would tell me, man, that's one thing that I can't stand is the flamboyant uh, homosexual. And my mouth hit the floor because I'm like, in, in me as heterosexual male, I mean, everybody's just in one group. He was like, oh, no, no, no. He goes, I cannot stand that. And I was like, oh, okay, roger that. I mean, I didn't know, but thank you for the education. So anyway, um, let's move on. Um, overly self-sufficient. Okay, I, I, I give you that. Um, <clears throat> and I kind of see the uh, the character of uh, Gaston uh, from the uh, Disney movie of uh, Beauty and the Beast whenever I saw that. So I was like, okay, I, I, I can see that. Um, and then being emotionally sensitive, yeah, kind of kind of like pair those two together. So then I, I agree with that. But yeah, I mean, outside of outside of that list, um, just that that whole aggression and discrimination and not displaying emotion, I just look at that differently according to my life's experience. Um, but now on the po on the uh, positive masculine trait uh, list, I agree with everything except for that again, except for that last one. Oh, um, and this is what uh, real men, <laughs> um, this is what I uh, try to instill in not only my household, uh, but the extension of my household, because this is the whole point. Um, that's, this is this whole each one teach one so you can do better than the generation before uh, without necessarily becoming um, too soft, you know. Um, and so here we go. We have secure in oneself, just like I said, get to know yourself, get to know who you are as a man, as a, as a young man, as a, as a boy, know your roles. And, and you get to do that by watching and observing, uh, men in, in, in general, and then, um, uh, having like a, uh, uh, a relationship with someone that's maybe like in a father figure position, if you don't necessarily have a father or if your father's passed or absent or whatever the case may be, um, there are real uh, men out here that can fulfill that role uh, and, and or a friendship period with other men. Um, now this is very good. And this is for, um, for, for uh, guys that are uh, in or trying to be in a relationship and we having to deal these women from Venus, if you know what I'm saying, because we are from Mars. So healthy communication. Yes, uh, that, that gets a double thumbs up right there. I really do like that. Um, emotionally vulnerable. That's different. That gets a thumbs up. 
emotional emotionally vulnerable does not mean marshmallow. There's a trust factor out there. And to each his own. Okay. The people, the person or person that I choose to uh, show my vulnerability to emotionally, um, that's a sacred uh, circle right there. Um, I would just say, men, when you begin to explore this, because I know it may be a little uncomfortable at first. It may feel a little kind of weird. Um, I get that uh, because we, because if you are a male like myself, a heterosexual male like myself, you probably had a dad like myself or a dad like figure that was in the, uh, a, he was a man's man is what we called back in the day. And so, yeah, they didn't hug a lot. They didn't express love a lot, different things like that but they were there they were supportive they showed you how to fish hunt play games do the whole nine yards you know in the even um you know in sports and different things like that so that's like the physical stuff that's how they showed their emotional vulnerability it was just kind of hard to see sometimes um so pick your people wisely and that way you don't have to worry about getting crushed or feeling betrayed in that. Um, the inclusiveness, the inclusive, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm on the next billet. Inclusive, to be inclusive, I'm sorry, I'm saying it all mixed up, but to be inclusive and open-minded. Now that'll work. Because now, instead of you trying to control me in in the in the toxic uh realm and saying you know a person that discriminates and everything okay you can i mean this this is this is how um people begin to grow and mature um start to try to embrace the uh the i'm sorry the inclusiveness of of other people again this might be uncomfortable at first, but this is you showing maturity and growth within yourself and um, you'll be able to grow from there. And just because you are being open-minded does not mean that, hey, I agree with you. Or oh, being open-minded does not mean that you are actually saying, okay, I'm not just going to totally and completely shut you out. I do want to hear what you have to say because you have value. You have value. And not to say that your way is the right way and the only way and so forth and everything. I'm willing to hear what you got to say because everybody has a voice. Because at the end, you still gonna go your way, I'm still gonna go my way. And if it's an argument, we can agree to disagree and we're still moving on. So let's move on. <laughs> uh, caring, very, very broad. Caring can look different, but um, cause there's different ways to, for a person, a person, period, to show that they care. Some people are are just good listeners, you know, uh, soundboards, if you will. Some people do things physically, like go get you something to show they care. Some people speak, you know, all, you know, broken heart, stuff like that. So let's move on. And sen sensually grounded. All that's just a fancy way of just saying that your uh, your sensitivity is in check you're not easily reeled and rocked and or you can recognize uh your buttons being pushed and you know how to regulate it you know how to cancel it out you know how to get to your 
you know, your Zen mode place, your happy place, or, or you have a healthy outlet rather than um, end up catching a court case. So that's good. So other than that, guys, um, that's what I found out. Um, maybe there's more information. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more information out there. I appreciate you hanging with me today. I hope that what I found today uh, has been uh, some uh, benefit uh, to you guys. Um, I can only speak for myself. I truly learned something uh, from this. And if there's anything that you uh, want to add, uh, to this, like I said, please, 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 please put it in the comments and I will be happy to uh, share that. Um, and if there's anything about what I said that offended you, um, we won't always agree. Um, but it is what it is. And so um, such is life, right? <laughs> Say love me. Okay, so with that being said, guys, again, I thank you. I'm CJ. This is Elephant Exposed, and we are out of here. Mm -hmm.